Okay. Well, um, October 28th, 2023. It has been a few weeks since I've been with you all and probably one of the most intense uh, times, um, certainly in my psyche, certainly I imagine for so many of us for a lot of reasons, but certainly um, what has happened in terms of terrorism in Israel, the experience now of the ongoing um, war in Palestine and and um, against Hamas, but impacting so many civilians, and I could go on and on. I'm so glad to be here. I really just want to name that my intention for today, I've called today's class Spacious Grace. There is such a need to have these spaces where we can tap into the compassionate heart, the easeful heart, even pockets of beauty, pockets of spacious joy in the midst of a very, very hurting world. This may um, not surprise any of you that my perspective is that we are human before we are a culture, a race, an ethnicity, a religion. And that for me, human to human is where I'm standing right now and heart to heart. And knowing that I'm not alone, um, that right now we've got about 90, 92 of us here together practicing that I know that I'm not alone in wanting to be able to relate to my own heart in a deeply compassionate, loving manner and wanting to be able to connect to others from that place. And that being able to start with addressing the polarities and the contradictions and the pain that sits inside of me and to be able to have the compassion here is what allows me to turn towards you lovingly, compassionately, um, to listen so deeply when we have those opportunities, right? To, to show up so fully. And, you know, I've been contemplating a lot and writing a lot in these recent weeks about how do we keep our heart open in a hurting world? I'll share a few of those reflections here and as you'll uh, expect from me, I have some chosen quotes and poems. I have um, a really beautiful class planned for us, some movement and some unwinding of tension, which I think will feel really good. So how to keep your heart open in a hurting world. Start out by loving yourself with all of your imperfections, scars and all. Place a hand on your heart and say, oh, honey, I know it is so hard right now. Then look for beauty anywhere you can find it. Let yourself be filled up by color and light. Breathe it into you and sigh out something, some tension, some pain. This doesn't mean that we ignore our struggle, our suffering. We're bringing more space around it so that we can hold ourselves even more lovingly. Then turn to your beloved ones. Tell them that you care, that you're willing to lean into their suffering as well. And from here, we can expand outward, perhaps even to attending to the suffering of this world we share. And yet we must come back to ourselves again and again with loving kindness. And the cycle repeats. I shared that my friend Beth, who's here, who re recently wrote a really beautiful, stunning memoir on her own journey of grief um, relationship to her partner, um, the accident which uh, left him with quadriplegia. And she can put her link into the chat here for us. I'll put it in the link of our YouTube comments, Beth Erlander. And she shared this quote in her newsletter this week. She said, the work of the, this is from, sorry, uh, Francis Weller. 
Francis Weller. The work of the mature person is to carry grief in one hand and gratitude in the other and to be stretched large by them. How much sorrow can I hold? That's how much gratitude I can give. If I carry only grief, I'll bend towards cynicism and despair. If I have only gratitude, I'll become saccharine and won't develop much compassion for other people's suffering. Grief keeps the heart fluid and soft, which helps make compassion possible. And I'll follow this with a quote from Robin Wall Kimmerer, uh, Kimmerer excuse me, uh, the author of Braiding Sweetgrass. Even a wounded world is feeding us. Even a wounded world holds us, gives us moments of wonder and joy. I choose joy over despair, not because I have my head in the sand, but because joy is what the earth gives me daily, and I must return the gift. Hmm. Even before we go into our formal movement practice, just take that in for a moment. These two invitations to hold in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our grief, in the midst of despair, a willingness to also sense gratitude and joy. Right? Whether it's going for a walk by the water, if that's where you live, whether it's finding beautiful photos in your phone, whether it's even appreciating that we're going to get snow today in Colorado, right? Whatever that is that we can turn towards and allow some beauty in. I love that. That's so beautiful. Just some of you are holding yourself, rocking a little side to side, moving your bodies, breathing, let something in. All right. Another poem, because we need a little extra poetry today. My, my book. Here's from Wendell Berry, Not a Surprise. And Deborah, you probably thought this one was coming in our, in our stream of our theme here today. The Peace of Wild Things. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars. The day blind stars waiting for with their light for a time. I rest in the grace of the world and am free. So it's this spacious grace that we'll spend the next hour and a quarter or so inviting in, moving into, breathing into, and allowing. And one last quote. This one's from Rumi. And it's a little bit of an invitation to move beyond the polarizations that we're being presented with in our world and that sometimes even are getting tossed about by us as we're trying to process the, the world and within us. This is the excerpt from his poem, A Great Wagon. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make 
any sense. Okay. With all of this said, and with our intention here, both around spacious grace and the ability to hold what I'll call the both and, the sorrow and the beauty, the suffering and the spacious grace. What allows you to attend to hurt and simultaneously sense hope? Right. You might even recall a time, a moment, could be recent, it could be a while back, where you sensed that beauty, the one that every, every quote I've shared here has invited us to go seek and find. What awakens that within you, this beauty of this world that doesn't hold back even when there's this much wounding and despair and suffering. Bring that with you onto our mat. Place a little altar right at the front of your mat, just in your mind's eye that represents your commitment to return to beauty. And I'm gonna slide back onto my mat as well. Um, it is helpful to have a few blocks for practice, a pillow if you like that when we go knee down onto the mat, and anything that brings you comfort. You can see in my space that my husband continues to take over my yoga space with plants, especially bringing in the summer plants in from the outdoors. And um, <laughs> so my, my mat is now surrounded by more greenery than ever, but it is beautiful. All right. I think I'm going to mic on the outside outside so we don't get muffled in here. All right, sounds still good? All right. So let's just warm up for a moment, especially if it's chilly. I know some of you are in some warm zones, but especially here in Colorado, let's bring your palms together. A nice little vigorous warming. Good. And then an invitation to bring your palms right over your face. And just a few breaths, feeling that generous holding. And behind your hands, perhaps letting your eyes close for a moment. That invitation to go within and to trust that you're held. And if anything I ever invite doesn't feel right, if you prefer eyes open, gazing between your fingers, knowing that we're still out here, you listen to you honor your practice. And holding that even if behind your hot eyes and in your heart, there's tenderness right now, that too can be held. We're cultivating the spaciousness and that connection to grace, a wider web that holds us all. From here, perhaps beginning to smooth out fingertips from center of forehead out towards your temples, across your cheekbones, out towards your ears. Good. And maybe even a little massage 
of your ears. And if you'd like from shoulders down to elbows, just a few self-hug, self-applied touch, and just waking up the sensory experience of your body here and now. Physically in this practice, I'm going to invite us to really just move through common places where we hold tension. So the shoulders being one of them, just finding some rotational movements through your arms, waking up the shoulder joint, beginning to kind of unwind where we accumulate sorrow, tension, distress. You can let your elbows, your wrists come into the motion, just allowing a little sense of freedom as well in your chest and upper body. Good. Ah. And then maybe letting your breath go. Ah, just sigh something out, a sound. Ah. Ah. Good. And then softening through your arms, letting your chin soften towards the nape of your neck, and then semicircles to one shoulder and the other. So as we keep moving through some of these places where we hold tension, neck is another hot spot. I know it is for me. You can slow this down. You can pause at any place that is calling for your attention and breath. And then allowing some of your own organic movement to greet your back of your neck and sides as you move from side to side. Mm, again, you can let your voice go. Oh. Oh. Good. And then coming back up to center. This next one is for your jaw, anyone else hold tension in your jaw or clench your teeth or grind them at night? So it's so allowing, we'll start with a little bit of self-massage under the ears at the joint of the TMJ, is letting your self intuitively go toward a little bit of that uh, sticky. You can even kind of partially clench your jaw like a her. Uh, you can give it a sound like you want to bite her, uh, right? And we're not really hurting anyone on our mat. So we get to work with all of that intensity that gets stuck in there. Rage, anger, uh, right? And give it a growl. Uh, you can move it through your body. You don't have to hang on to it. Uh, uh, uh. Open and close your jaw. Uh, give it a stretch. You can even stick your tongue out. Uh, and I'll come a little closer for this. We can do a little bit of that, that lion's breath here. Uh, right? Giving it just a little bit extra oomph. You can use your fingertips. You can stick your tongue out. Uh, so you don't have to hold on to all of that gunk. Ah, uh, one more. Good. And then pause for a moment. How does that one feel? And because we're kind of alternating between a little bit of turning towards the intensity, just shake it out. Let something go, right? Look around your room as you do this, or you can look at my room if you need to see some greenery, <laughs> but look around and find something of beauty. Whew, ah, ah, ah. Mm, good. And then from here, we're going to find a little rocking motion. We're going to get into the joints of the spine, another place that can tighten up on us when we're feeling and you know, stressed, agitated, unsafe. 
So we're going to rock a little side to side, like you're walking on your sits bones, right? So you can lift and lower or just allow this imagined walking on your sits bones to translate into this side to side movement of your spine. Then you can let your arms get into it a little bit if you'd like. And we're just going a little side to side, like a sidewinder snake, letting the joints of the spine move in this way. Let your arms mirror if you like, like a little wave. Good. And then from here, just a little deeper into each side. A little stretch and reach. And side two. Mm. Good. And from here, we'll find a little spinal movement, like a wave once again, forward back. So you can kind of wave your spine. It's a little bit like a seated cat cow, but maybe a little bit less in that fully linear direction. Just you can send your nose towards the earth and lift back up. And then back into more of a traditional seated cat-cow. You can even bring hands to shins and then just allowing yourself to feel that range of motion of your spine in this direction. Good. Our next set of spinal movements are going to be a rotational movement. And with hands on your knees, just finding a nice full circle. Inhale forward, exhale back. And then taking that in the other direction. Gorgeous, all right, and into center. Here we are. All right, from here, we'll get into our hips, another spot that tends to gather, that gathers some tension. Let's start actually with your ankle and your, I'll go right leg here, just so we're on the same side. And then shin, you can take it in each direction. And now let's greet your, the hip. So nice big wide circles. You can hold on to knee and foot or just your shin in any way, knee and ankle, taking your leg in both directions. And then turning at your hip joint so that right knee comes toward left foot. So we're in a deer pose and right, right ankle back behind, right foot behind. And we're going to turn towards the left. So now we've got our spinal movements and our hip joints enjoying the flow. And I like to even start with my hand on my right hip and just taking a few breaths here, lifting and lowering out of that right hip, in and out of that twist. Eventually, you might want to take that right arm overhead. And as we're getting into this shape, we're also beginning to soften and warm up through the psoas muscles, which are often referred to as our fight-flight muscles, gathering a lot of tension and preparedness to defend ourselves. And in this moment, in the relative safety of the yoga mat, perhaps we can come out of that defensive stance. One more breath here. And then back through to center, this time 
right leg up and over your left knee. So we're in a bit of a seated twist. And then a most gentle turn toward the right, right? Fingertips can touch the earth, right? Arm becomes a kind of second spine here. And then left hand can maybe make contact with your knee or maybe your elbow, but we're not cranking. We're not pressuring ourselves into any shape. And you might start with your gaze towards the right as if gazing over your right shoulder. I'll also encourage you to experiment with taking your head, your chin all the way towards the left. You might even take right hand, left hand on right shoulder. And just to continue to encourage right shoulder back as you reach chin, even gaze all the way to the left. And then we'll unwind shoulders, neck, legs. You can send both feet in front for a moment and just rock them a little side to side. Make the knees with the knees bent, or you can rock your feet side to side, windshield wiper style. And back through, we'll find all of that on the left leg here. So left foot around the ankle. And shin, each direction here, Good. and nice big wide hip circles, one way and the other. And around, we're going to come into this deer shape on side two. So left knee towards right foot, and maybe starting with left hand on left hip and just a few rotational movements here in and out of your twist. Oh, today is a lunar eclipse, another celestial moment that, who knows, may be adding to some of the intensity of our internal world or external world, but it also, in a sense, is a pretty stunning reminder that the celestial bodies around us have rhythms and alignments. Let's go ahead and maybe a few more breaths here. If you want to let your arm extend, be freed. And that sometimes light is visible and sometimes it's shadowed, but that doesn't mean it's gone. All right. And then from here, we're going to take left leg around into this setup for a supine twist. Left arm behind, fingertips to the earth, nice long spine, and a gentle twisting to the left. Nothing forced. Find the range of movement for your spine. We're rinsing out where we accumulate that tension, tightness. And then maybe if you did so on the other side, let your head come to the right this time, Maybe your right hand comes across to your left shoulder or upper neck. And your breath is your friend here, breathing into the tight spaces and breathing into the openness. Lovely. Let's come on out of that. Shake it out once again. Maybe you windshield wiper your legs. And then from here, invitation is to bring your feet forward, kind of mats widths apart, and then start to let your knees drop side to side here. So 
we're in a sense going in and out of deer on each side in these transitions. And you can also reach up overhead once again and beautiful a little opening and stretch again for the psoas as well as your hips. And let it feel good. You might even explore this one hands-free. All right. And then when you are ready, we're going to meet on our backs, making your way there, your own timing. And we'll do just a little bit of waking up through the core, letting yourself feel that connection to the strength and stability that helps you stand upright in the world, live in your values, live into your integrity of self. And we're gonna start with a little pelvic stability. So letting your knees bend here and placing your hands against your knees and just pressing your knees into your hands, resisting with your hands and feeling how this lights up the low belly. And it's also lighting up the stabilizing muscles around your pelvis, sacrum. And then releasing this hold, drawing right knee in, we're going to press right shin against hands and send your left leg long. And it's up to you. You can send your left leg all the way to the earth. You can hover it and you might choose to hover upper body, tucking chin towards chest and allowing yourself once again to feel that pressing of shin to hands and resisting with hands. Coming back to breath, maybe feeling a little shake. And then lowering down, keeping hold of your right leg. You can let your upper body rest and just a few lifts and lowers, just the left leg. Like a little lever here and just feeling that movement one more time and then lowering your left foot we'll switch it out drawing left knee in cupping with your hands around your shin pressing shin into hands resisting with your hands and maybe the right leg goes long maybe on the earth maybe hovering maybe upper body hugging in towards your left knee chin tucked towards chest and then now it's the resistance hold, emphasizing that press of shin to hands, resistance of hands against shin, coming back to breath. And settling back in upper body and just the right leg lifts and lowers, continue to find that press on the left side. Good. And then from here, bending both knees, hands behind your head, and a few kind of classic lifts, upper body lifts and lowers. Now, if you don't want to have your knees tabletopped, you can have feet on the floor whatever best serves you here. Good. 
And then from here, invitation is to find a cross crawl, taking right elbow towards left knee, extending right leg and vice versa, and your rhythm from side to side. And truth be told, all of these can be made easier or harder, anything that I offer. So you are in charge of the degree of challenge in this class. And we don't always get to choose our challenges off the mat. In fact, most often they're to some degree what we have to reckon with out there. So on the mat, you have this practice of making choices and how you respond to the chosen challenge is also up to you. And then coming back through to center, a brief pause, letting your upper body settle feet to the earth. And then from here, I'll invite you to place hands, palms down to the earth, pressing into your feet and lifting your hips. And we're finding a bridge pose. And if this is new for you, we generally don't want to turn the head once we've waited a little bit of the upper spine in this shape. So just allowing yourself to really feel your way in. And if you're wanting to turn towards the, the screen coming down first, you might scooch your shoulders underneath or your hands towards each other. You might even clasp your hands coming into this bridge shape. Now drawing upper arms under your upper back, pressing into feet, lifting your hips, even allowing the back of the head to press into the mat and a slight lift of your chin, creating the curve in your cervical spine and then coming back to breath. And then when you're ready, releasing your hands, rolling your spine vertebrae by vertebrae down to the mat. Ah. And perhaps drawing your knees in, hands behind the knees. And if you like, a few rock and rolls here on your spine. Eventually making your way into a tabletop position. And when you arrive here, a little bit of free flow. Just however you want to move and breathe, integrating some of the spinal movements and core strengthening that we've done thus far. What I like about these opportunities for free movement is that you are listening to your sensations. You're following what feels good. You're turning towards joy. And there's no prescribed movement. There's no, you don't have to take any known yoga shape. It's just listening and following And then when you feel ready for a little more guided movement, I'll invite us into that tabletop once again. And just to find that difference between our cat and cow shape, allowing yourself for a moment to find lift of head tail. And we're gonna call this cow, okay? So that the, that the pelvic, um, tilt and we're lifting the tailbone we're allowing the belly to come closer to the earth and then as we find cat 
We're going to round the spine, tuck the chin. Good. And maybe just one more breath here, finding those two. Your own rhythm. And I'll invite us to pause in cow. So allowing for more of that, um, that tilt of the tailbone up. And keeping that shape, I'll invite you to lift your left leg. And from this shape, maybe just a few presses with the sole of your left foot towards the ceiling. Really feeling that integrity. We're going to keep the spine in the same shape so that as we're going to draw the knee under, we're not going to curl the spine. Just allow yourself to feel it. It really restricts the range of motion, but it's a very nice stabilizer move for the low spine. And let's do it two more times. Pressing up, curling the knee without the spine. And then one more time. Good. We're going to make a, a new move here. We're going to send the right leg back. You can even extend out through the knee this time. And this time, let's curl the spine. Knee underneath. Just feel the difference. Inhale once again. This time, left knee towards left shoulder. Good. And I'm going to let you get a little fierce in this one more time. Exhale, maybe at lion's breath. And inhale towards your left shoulder. Good. This time, listen carefully. Lower your left foot. We're going to come into a half squat. So I love these moves because they let us get a little wild and primitive in our shape and Anything goes here, just allowing yourself to move in any way that serves you. You're close to the earth. You can really just get into those instinctual movements. Where's your yes? Where's your no? How does your body help you define that, identify that? All right. You can move side to side, getting into your spine. You can curl it in tight. You can expand big. Ah. And I'll offer a little guided movement here, which is to curl toward your left knee. And inhale, we're going to expand right fingertips to the earth, letting left leg long, right? <laughs> Whatever it is, I think my right fingertips are to the earth. My left arm's up above. All right, let's do that again. I'll try and name what limb is what here and expand. You'll find it. Let yourself kind of go like a shooting star and then find all that potential energy. And one more time, expand. We're going to stay here. We're in preparation now for gait. You might curl the right toes under. Let your left hand bring you upright. And then gait pose leaning towards your left leg. Ah. Just notice how that feels, gazing down to the side or up. And a kind of lovely moment to tap into that spacious grace. Beautiful. We're going to come up and around, and we're just meeting back in the tabletop. However you arrive there, and shake it out, shimmy it out, and back to yourself. Good. We'll find all of that on side two, starting out with just one round of cow and cat. And then moving back through cow, keeping the spine in this shape, lifting through right leg, knee is bent, and sending your right footprint to the ceiling or the sky above. 
I think it's powerful to get a little stabilization around the hips at a time when the foundation of the world feels a little unstable. All right, and then from here, we're gonna keep the shape of the spine, drawing right knee under, range of motion is restricted, and back up. Good. Keep breathing. Two more of those. One more. And then we'll widen that range of motion, lengthening through your right leg. Exhale, knee under your body, contract, curl. Inhale, knee to right shoulder. Good. Inhale, like your favorite fierce animal. Exhale it in. Inhale to the right shoulder. And this time, right foot's coming down to the earth, and we'll find that half primal squat. And this is that opportunity to just let go into whatever is going to serve you here. You can sometimes when we're feeling some tension, we can curl up around it. We can really acknowledge it, give it a sound. It's helping your brain identify where that chronic tension gets held. And once it's known by the brain, we have more choice around it. We can go, oh, I'm going to tense and ah, let it go. That's the kind of whole um, understanding of progressive muscle relaxation is that we have to tense it before we can finally let that tension Oh, go. All right. So finding your movements, maybe side to side, maybe forward and back. And now we'll go into that contraction, expansion, turning towards right leg. And then exhale, left fingertips touch the earth. We expand, shooting star. And then sh contract and open. Ah, contract and open. Gorgeous. And this time, planting right foot. You can use that rotation around your right wrist to bring you up and over. We're coming into gate and allowing yourself just to find your variation, gazing down or up. You can. Rotate your shoulder a little more. And then when you feel ready, we meet in tabletop once again. From this tabletop, I'll invite uh, a little bit of a different transition up to downward dog. Our first um, first part of this, and you might even walk your knees just slightly back or your hands slightly forward. Just feel this out for your body. And we're going to curl the toes under and just hover the knees for a moment. So hovering in this kind of crouching dog, whatever you want to call this shape, sometimes referred to as a bear shape. Uh, just allowing yourself to, again, feel that strength of the lower body and then take that strength with you, keeping knees bent, begin to press your hips back. And now you've got upper body pressing towards your thighs with the deeply bent knees. And then from here, maybe beginning to lengthen out through your legs. You might even come up to your tippy toes before descending your hips towards the floor and of course they don't have to touch for many of us they never will so it's allowing yourself once you arrive in this downward facing dog to walk it out make it yours mm. and twist your hips a little from side to side 
by bending both knees, turning your heels from side to side. Good, and we'll be back in this shape again. For now, I'll invite you to take a nice, slow, sauntering walk with your feet towards your hands and arriving in a ragdoll shape. You can always use your blocks under hands to bring the floor closer and allowing yourself to just sense and feel your legs underneath you, your feet as this new foundation And then from here, I'll invite a, again, a kind of guided transition to standing. So keeping your legs pretty bent here, you can even purposefully bend them pretty deep. And then we're gonna go with a very long torso, very long torso. And with that long torso, sending your arms back along the sides of your body. So palms facing down and in this shape, allowing the lower belly to wake up again. So we kind of found a version of this shape laying on our backs, pressing our hands against our knees, and now feeling that same area of the low belly lighting up in your awareness. You can stay here, or maybe your weight shifts a little more towards your heels and you draw your arms forward. Now, this is more challenging, the lever of the movement is different. You can imagine you have a little block between your legs. You're drawing your inner thighs towards each other while simultaneously as if you were sending your heels apart. Just feeling a little bit of that contradictory action in the legs, squeezing them inward and pressing your feet away. Okay. And then from here, either with let arms back or forward, pressing into your feet, to come all the way up to standing and arrive new relationship to gravity. Go ahead. Built this so and then I stand up. I still have hands. Okay, good enough. So new relationship to gravity. And pause here. You can let your arms rest down by your sides for a moment and feeling your feet underneath you. I'm standing kind of hips widths apart rather than, than toe to toe. And you can even bend your knees and then re-lengthen them. Really feel that foundation. Uh, you can even rock a little side to side or forward and back on your feet. So you can sense what we call the four corners of each foot beneath you. And then grounding into the mounds of the big toes, lighting up the inner line of the legs. And we'll find mountain, mountain either with palms by your sides or arms up overhead. And in this mountain, rather than crunching your shoulders by your ears, we're gonna go with nice broad upper body, lots of space for your shoulders your neck and sensing the strength of your foundation that also allows you to uplift to the realms of potential. From here, let's find a little spinal movement again. I'll invite a side bend to the right and you have choices. You might take a hold of your left wrist. You might take right hand by your right hip. You might extend both arms in opposite directions and you can come in and out for just a few breaths. Side one. And then switching it out, side two. Matching whatever you did. Or finding what this side uniquely is calling for from you.
Beautiful. And then back through to center and allowing yourself to find a little bit of that cat cow in the spine, curling forward and opening your heart. Curling elbows and forearms come to touch and then let yourself find that expansion. One more time. Inhale here, and this time releasing your hands to clasp behind your back and allowing yourself to find a little bit of an opening again across the collarbones this time. As you draw your, your connected hands downward, you can bend your knees, you can even widen your stance if you like, and finding a forward fold, yogi mudra. What I love about this posture, the seal of yoga, is that we are bowing the head below the heart, trusting that intellect, knowledge needs to be in service of the guiding wisdom of the heart. Softening hands to earth by way of your sacrum, finding a halfway lift, inhale. And exhale, planting hands, stepping back, we'll go from high plank and then lowering knees, chest and chin to the earth and pause for a moment, feeling this shape and gravity before settling your hips long to the earth. Planting hands beneath your shoulders. Inhale, finding a cobra shape. And exhale to lower. Two more of these, your own rhythm, your own depth, listening to how much weight in the hands, how much lift of your heart. And from here, the invitation is to press up through table and then listen carefully here, keeping hips stacked above your knees, walking your hands forward into puppy dog. You can allow your forehead to rest onto the mat and breathing into the space of your shoulders, upper back. It's up to you, maybe you want to curl your toes under, see what feels right. And I'll offer a variation, which is to lower your elbows. Place your hands in a prayer shape, palm to palm. Re-lower your forehead if it lifted. And then begin to take your thumbs towards the back of your neck. Now, as you do so, explore how it feels to hug your elbows toward each other and sending your breath into your shoulders and upper back. The Sanskrit name for this shape is Anahatasana. Anahata is the heart chakra, and it's the pose for the heart chakra, but more specifically, we're really breathing here into the backside, the receptive side of the heart chakra. And then slowly releasing hands to the earth, walking your way back through to tabletop, maybe slightly longer stance here and hovering knees, pausing for a moment in this bear shape. And then pressing with your hands, long spine towards deeply bent knees. And then perhaps lifting heels, lengthening legs, 
and beginning to descend heels toward the mat. Good. And we'll find all of that one more time, at least a variation thereof. And you can walk yourself forward. Maybe some of you want to hop yourself forward. And when you arrive at the front of your mat, halfway lift, exhale to fold. And inhale, we'll come up to standing once again. And I make a little shift. It finally got warm enough in my space. Maybe you're warming up too. And I'm, you know, I'm doing a little workshop next week on fascia. And so much of what I love about working with the connective tissue in the body is this recognition that every night when we sleep, that connective tissue gets sticky. It hardens a little bit, but stress also hardens it and leads us to accumulate all this discomfort in the body and that movement and hydration and especially these spiral movements and fluid movements help to re- lubricate the fascia of the body. So we'll do that together. So a little side to side this time. We'll literally inhale, center, exhale to each side two more times. Again. Uh, and then through center, this time, just one time, inhale, opening through the chest. Exhale, we're going to take elbows and forearms together. Inhale, open. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, we'll find that halfway lift. And exhale as you fold, planting hands, stepping back, high plank. And again, we're going to lower to the earth, knees, chest, and chin, pausing there for a moment before exhaling, tailbone long to the earth. This time, the invitation is to come into a locust pose. In locust, the arms come back behind, maybe interlacing your hands, and then sending your tailbone long as you begin to inhale through upper body, maybe legs come off the mat as well. As you feel the bound quality of this shape, arms clasping, the contraction in the back body. Notice how this then helps provide feedback as we exhale, let it go. And I'll invite you to curl back into child's pose and receive. Letting yourself soften into the support of the earth, shoulders releasing, lower back soft, forehead heavy, breath recalibrating. And when you're ready, through tabletop and finding a little free movement or something to drink. Before we go into our next invitation. Okay. So arriving in tabletop, 
Again, maybe that transition, knees lift first, sending your upper body towards your bent legs. Perhaps that extension of the legs before descending your heels. And then from here, I'll invite us to come forward. And this time, bending your knees, finding Utkatasana. So a airplane, uh, we'll find our little uh, parachute to airplane. It was uh, by request from, from Phyllis. And uh, it was, it's been a favorite of mine too. So finding this shape, we're going to exhale. We're going to start by sending the arms back. And inhale, just the arms for a moment. Good. And then inhale, exhale. This next time, inhale, let your left knee come with you. And exhale, left foot to the earth, arms back. Inhale, right leg. And exhale. And one more side to side. Good. And right leg. Now here's our change. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, sending your left leg back. We have a pause here through balance before descending left toes to the earth. And you can take your time. If you didn't land just right, allow yourself to adjust your feet so they're more like hip widths apart and from here, invitation is to draw your arms up overhead. Again, nice and wide around your shoulders. Nice and wide space for your neck. Just like we did in mountain, opening your elbows wide, lift your heart. And exhale, elbows, forearms, hands together. Inhale to expand. Exhale. Good. And one more. Beautiful. From here, invitation is to spiral open all the way to five pointed star. Letting yourself feel this shape that it is all about taking up space, that willingness to expand, still sensing that foundation, still sensing that connection to your compassionate heart. And we'll take a warrior two to the back side of your mat. And just a few breaths here. And then from here, I'm going to invite a little bit of movement away from that front bent leg and then towards it. And away, you can even press your palms in opposite directions and toward and away and toward this time as we lift away lengthening through your left leg nice long reach through your side body and exhale long reach through your left fingertips and allowing them to make contact somewhere on your left leg. And then from here, rotating torso and spine and maybe gazing up towards your right fingertips. You can always micro bend into your left knee, nice and safe for the joints. And even here, you might find a little bit of movement. Right? Every posture gets to be this home base for exploratory shapes. Maybe it's just in the right arm or shoulder. Maybe you're curling down and opening back up. 
One more breath. And softening through your left knee, through warrior two. Inhale, reach away. And exhale to the earth, backside of your mat. This time you get to choose cobra or maybe you come halfway down and lifting through upward facing dog before making your way to downward facing dog. Familiar shape. What's changed? I love what I love about coming back through downward dog repeatedly in a practice is that it does become a little bit of a way to check back in. What's changing throughout the practice? What's opening and what tension is still there calling for your attention? And they may be gazing forward, a walk, a hop, a jump to get there. And finding a halfway lift. And exhale, and we come into our Utkatasana, our fierce pose. Intense standing pose, Ut. Ut stands for intensity and how phenomenal that we have these opportunities on the yoga mat to greet intensity purposefully, intentionally, and to notice how we respond with our breath, with a quality of mind. Exhale, sending your arms back. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, just the arms. One more time like that. Maybe a sound comes out. Good. Inhale, arms. Exhale as we send the arms back this time. We're going to inhale, taking right leg with us. And exhale. Left leg comes to join, goes for the ride. Am I... Friends of the Karate Kid generation, you can, of course, think crane. <laughs> okay, exhale, inhale, left leg. This time we take right leg with us. And our challenge transition, chosen challenge, if you're joining me through airplane, a pause here, and then settling right toes to the earth and then sweeping your arms up through crescent here we are now again you can keep that nice wide open space for your shoulders and neck and we'll amplify that a little bit more opening through the collarbones elbows come wide heart lifts and exhale, elbows, hands together, round the spine. Inhale. And exhale. And then inhale back through crescent. And we'll open it all the way up. Five-pointed star once again. Good. From here, I'm gonna invite us to find a little bit of a horse or goddess shape, whatever your gets called both and both are welcome here. And we're gonna basically bend the knees in this shape and we'll find a little polarity twist. It's one of my very favorites. Again, a lot of opening through that upper shoulder girdle and allowing yourself to twist to one side. You can use your hands against the inner thighs. Pressing is a little bit of counter mobility here we inhale through center exhale the opposite direction and then moving a little side to side your rhythm your breath another chance if you like to exhale through the mouth and ah, let a sound out ha ah, sigh hmm ah. 
sometimes I get to this this particular movement and shape and I don't ever want to leave it. I could just stay here for the rest of the day. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's feeling good to me. Exhale. Ah. Inhale to center. Okay, one more time. And then this time, let's go ahead and come on out. Let's find that expansive five-pointed star. Enjoy it. Maybe wiggle your hips a little bit in here. Okay. And then we're coming towards the front of the mat. Greeting warrior two. Stability, strength, empowerment, confidence. And we'll find a little movement here, reaching away and toward your front leg. Beautiful. Next time we reach away from the front leg, let's go ahead and lift up. We're gonna lengthen through the right leg. Now you don't have to fully straighten, you keep that micro bend. Then we're gonna reach, 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 right hand, right arm, locating some place of stability, some place of trusting that the ground is there beneath you. So we're not just floating in space. This allows the psoas to really let go in this opening shape and then lifting through your left arm, maybe gazing up or down. And as with all of our shapes, you can stay just like that, or you might find a little bit of movement. And then when you're ready, bending through the right leg, revisiting warrior two, and we're going to descend to the earth, finding your way into downward facing dog. If you want a little vinyasa in there, find it. All is well. Um, and from here, I will invite all of us to send a little wave movement forward through high plank and then lowering knees, chest, chin to the earth once again. And settling your tailbone long. From here, our complimentary heart opener to this practice is Dhanurasana bow pose. Now you can find locust or cobra if bow is not for you. You can rest in child's bows or move right to Shavasana. And if you're joining me, bending the legs, taking a clasp of ankles, maybe flexing your feet if that's available. And then beginning for a moment, bowing forehead to earth. Drawing navel up from your mat, inhale, exhale, pressing legs into hands, allowing that press of the shins to begin to open up through the front of your chest, collarbones, shoulders. Coming to breath, maybe breath rocks you a little in this shape. And exhale, settling to the earth, crocodile, palm over palm, forehead resting on the backs of your hands, toes pointing outward, heels in, and surrendering, belly down to this earth we share. Letting your breath recalibrate.
And then slowly drawing your legs back behind you, planting the tops of the feet back on your mat. And I'll invite you to come into Sphinx. Sphinx with your elbows under your shoulders, your forearms pressing into the mat. And finding this shape first, before we go on, just really drawing elbows back, heart forward. Even your chin gets to come slightly back. And maybe your eyes gazing towards the tip of your nose. It's one of the things that I love about visualizing the Sphinx in ancient Egypt is some semblance of something that has been on this planet for a very long time and has seen stretched out in the landscape, the wars, the tragedies, as well as the weddings and celebrations and births. And the equanimity that I imagine that comes with that much of an expanse of understanding. I'll invite a transition from here, bending your left knee, planting your left hand and taking a gaze over your left shoulder towards your left toes. Now you might even curl your right toes under for a second and give yourself a little rock. You can take your gaze back forward if you like for that. Just letting that rock of your right foot move into left hip and knee, right shoulder. Your jaw can be soft. And then softening your right foot back to the earth and maybe a few movements here in and out of a little twist towards the left through your upper body. Winding down our practice. And from here, an invitation to take your left arm a little bit more forward, enough to slide your right arm under so that your right shoulder can come to the mat. And now we're setting up for a supine twist, sending your left arm around behind. This doesn't have to be your deepest twist ever. In fact, I encourage it not to be. Just land where you land. If Left knee lifts, that's just fine. Allowing your left shoulder to float if it's floating. One or two more breaths here. And then we come back around the way we came into that twist, turning toward the left, planting left hand, right arm comes out from under and back through sphinx. And we'll find all of that on side two, bending through your right knee, upper body in our sphinx shape. You can even take your right palm to the earth in a moment here to rock with your left toes. And you can explore with that rocking, anything that just can let itself be rocked. <laughs> your heart, your brain. And then softening that movement in your left foot. And then from here, some rotational movements, gazing toward your right toes, over your right shoulder, finding the range of motion. This side might feel different than the other side, honoring, sending your breath into any pockets of tension. And then we find that twist, walking right hand forward, Sending left arm underneath, left shoulder greets the earth. 
and then opening right arm down and you might find that that left knee floats or the right shoulder floats and we're not forcing anything. All right. Now on this side, we'll have a different transition. So I'll invite you to simply roll all the way to your back. Now, like me, you might be fully off your mat and you can stay there or you might scoot yourself into the comfort of the mat underneath you. You might want to layer if it's chilly in your space, a blanket, a sweater. And check in with yourself here. So our preparation for Shavasana, that doesn't mean you have to go immediately there. You might find that you'd like to find a, um, a little seed pose, crutching your knees in, your nose towards your knees. You might want a happy baby, a figure four, another bridge pose, or any shape that doesn't have any known yoga posture, or yoga Sanskrit name, none of the above, just something that simply feels good to you. Taking a few breaths in whatever movement or shape you're choosing. And then eventually making your way into some resting shape for stillness, for integration, whether that's a traditional Shavasana, a seated meditation, legs up the wall. Now I will encourage you to stay and linger, savor, receive. I'm also going to offer a few of our chosen words for today as you rest and allow these to just wash over you as you sense the earth holding you. The first is the invitation to welcome in any openings that have ar ar arisen in response to this practice. And allow yourself to take in the experience of grace, if that's what has shown up for you in whatever form of space, of your own willingness to engage in a practice that's inviting you to keep your heart open in a hurting world. Maybe to even bring back to mind that time or space of beauty in connection to nature, the earth, a place and time when you have felt loved or held. To come into that presence of still water and to feel above you the day blind stars waiting for their light, waiting with their light for a time to rest in the grace of the world and to be free. To sense that field that holds us all, that lives beyond the ideas of wrongdoing and right doing where even the phrase, each other, doesn't make sense. And 
and to remember that joy is what the earth gives us daily. And it is our job to return the gift. With all of that, all of those invitations, rest, stay in your Shavasana as long as you'd like, linger. And if and only if and when and only when you are ready to make your transition back out, finding some small movements, fingers and toes, maybe rocking a little side to side, drawing your knees in, Finding that fetal position, if you'd like, before we allow ourselves to be reborn back into this world that is waiting for us. Making your transition back up to sitting. And good to see you. Thinking a moment, thanking yourself for showing up. And it is from the spacious grace, the compassionate heart within me, that I bow to deeply honor with utmost gratitude to each of you, your willingness to touch that spacious grace and compassionate heart within you. Namaste.